Inferential statistical tests allow us to make assumptions about what our data means and whether that data is statistically significant or not. These are some of the values that you'll see in the papers you're reading, alpha, degrees of freedom, p-values, and test statistics, and these are some of the tests you'll see. Chi-square is comparing categorical variables, so a discrete IV and a qualitative DV. ANOVA and T-test, they all take discrete IVs and quantitative DVs, meaning that you can average your results. And so you're going to have a mean. And so with a one sample t-test, you're going to be comparing a single mean to some specific value and seeing if they are different or not. Two sample t-test takes two different groups. Sometimes those groups can be paired. Sometimes they can be independent of each other. But you're going to compare two means. And ANOVA is whenever you have three or more groups, so three or more means to compare. Our alpha value that we in our class are always going to use is 0 .05 and we can talk about that more later on but it basically means that we're only accepting a 1 and 20 percent chance that our values are different because of some random chance. We are 95 percent confident that there is a real difference there. Degrees of freedom is used to find the critical value of your test statistic. It's generally something you use when you're looking at a chart. And that is going to be n minus 1 for a one sample t-test, where n is your number of trials, repeated trials, or basically how many samples you're averaging. Degrees of freedom for a two sample is n minus 2. And degrees of freedom for ANOVA, there are two values. One is the degrees of freedom between your groups, and so that's the number of groups minus one. This would not be relate. This would not be needed in a t-test because it's always going to be one. You'll always have two groups minus one equals one, so we don't use it for t-test. We need it for ANOVA because we can have three or more groups. Degrees of freedom within is just like the t-test. It's n minus the number of groups. Two sample t-test was n minus 2. One sample t-test was n minus 1. So there's some consistency here. And for chi-square, since it's all categorical, you're going to take the number of groups that you're using for something called observed and expected and subtract 1 from that. So if we have four different things that we're looking at, our degrees of freedom is 3. Test statistic is surprisingly simple in their names. Uh, one and two sample t-tests create a t. When you do the calculation, the test statistic is called your t-value. ANOVA, I think, is named for something called a factor. It used to be a factor test, and so that produces an f-value. Can't quote me on that, though. Better to talk to a mathematician. But that is our F value for ANOVA, and chi-square creates a chi, the Greek letter chi, square value. Pretty simple. And then the P values, also pretty simple when you see them all together. Any time T is greater than the T critical value that you get from that chart with the degrees of freedom, your P value is going to be less than your alpha value. So the charts are based on an alpha of 0 0.05 or 0.1 or 0 0.01, depending on what you're looking for. Remember, we're always going to use an alpha of 0 0.05. Same thing for two sample t-test. If t is greater than your t-critical value, p is less than your alpha. Anytime p is less than your alpha, you have a significant difference between your groups. When f is greater than f-critical value, p is less than alpha. When chi is greater than chi square, or sorry, when chi square is greater than chi square critical, p is less than alpha. So they're related, they're similar, they're a little bit different, and that's why we can set up our tables to show these inferential statistics test results in a similar way each time.